Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to get canceled in this one. Big money, play for your time's up. We need a plan. Don't say it. Don't you dare. We don't say this, don't say it. We have to split up. Oh. Your time has run out. It's time to die. There's a crazy person out here hunting us. You got Rosa Parks on your shirt, right? Would she be sitting down right now? I mean, that's exactly what she did. You can shut up. Made you look. Made you look. What black women gotta say to everyone else? And today we have the blackening. Before we get into the, the whole shebane bane here, and I believe me, I wish I was being paid. I wish this was like an actual sponsorship, but I do have to thank Lionsgate. But every now and then Lionsgate sends me an invite for a early screening of an upcoming film. I'm not talking about Regal Mystery Movie Monday early films where it's like 10 days out. This thing's not coming out like for a month and I got to see this like a month early. So I'm like one of the, I guess the test audiences. I don't know if they recorded. The Regal that I went to, unfortunately, is that I don't even go to that Regal anymore because I think it's a really shitty Regal. I'm not gonna say any locations or anything, but I'll, uh, I'll leave that there. It's probably the worst Regal in my state or at the very least in the county. But thank you to Lionsgate for the invite. I went with uh, an amigo of mine and we went to go see an early showing of The Blackening. I saw the trailer for this one one time and I was very curious. I thought the trailer was decent. Like it didn't look bad, but it didn't look fantastic either. But I was I was very intrigued. It's a very self-aware, well, when I say black comedy, horror film, Cabin in the Woods, bunch of black people, things start happening, lives are at risk, and people are trying to survive. And of course, you know, all the tropes are gonna be addressed and everybody's referencing these tropes as they're going on. So the recipe seems like a formula that should work out really well. So I was, even if it crashed and burned, even if it was the funniest film I've seen all year, I wanted to see this film. I had already planned to go see it and I got an invite to see it early. So here's my two cents. First of all, director of The Blackening is a name that I don't recognize, but honestly I should. Uh, Tim Story, what a, this guy's been around for a minute. Here's the crazy part. He's been directing since, what was it, 90, 97, 1997 is when this guy started directing. And for years, like from, from 97 till 02, I think, aside from two feature films, it was just music videos, music videos, music videos. Then early 2000s, he starts making act like big films that I didn't realize he was responsible for. I want to say original Fantastic Four. I think it's the original one, but also like Taxi, episodes of various TV shows, different films, both live action and even ones here and there that have animation styles to it. The point is, this guy's filmography is everything from music videos to short films to comedian stand-up specials to black comedies like Barbershop. He's made a lot of content over the years. Normally, this is the part where I will break down the cast. I gotta admit, when it comes to ensemble casts, and this is for any movie in general, I don't really, if I took the time to break down every single role, we'd be here for a lot longer than you're willing to sit here for. But let me put it this way. Out of our whole cast of characters, I liked all of them by the end of the film. I liked, uh, they all brought a quality, a trait, a characteristic. They all brought something to the, to the table, but almost all of them have been in some form of major motion picture, acclaimed series, or just series in general. They all have a, a great filmography. Even characters that start off as like, I'm not sure I like this guy. Even by the end, do they all have a heart of gold? Maybe not, but they all, did something, said something, or they performed in such a way in the film where I got enjoyment out of all of it. Like, the, the cast was all great. I think I laughed the most at Jermaine Fowler's lines, uh, the guy who plays Clifton in this. And <laughs> Granted, Dwayne Perkins is up there too. He was close up there. He A lot of what he did made me laugh and entertained me a lot. Like I said, it's hard to pick just one or two, but if I had, you know, gun to my head here, those were two that really stood out for me. Some ancillary characters, you know, the, the wannabe jigsaw bad guy and all that. 
yeah, they're more tropey and forgettable and everything. End of the day, I'll be very candid with you. The experience overall, minus the specific theater I was in and my just general disdain for it, normally these days when I go to see a movie, it's either at the Art House Cinema, where I'm always early and seating's never a problem, or I go to a Regal Cinema, where you can literally pick your seats ahead of time when you buy it on the app, and you're fine. The love and magic of cinema has kind of faded I think for a lot of people over the years, it's like uh, flying on planes. I always get on a soapbox about this, but there's no there's no more respect. It's, it's never an event anymore for movies, sometimes for big blockbusters, but rarely. We got there early because it was, you know, limited seating. There was no guarantee of getting seats and it was first come, first serve. You can get the tickets online for free. Thank you again. And you go and then if you just try to get good seats and something about getting there and there was an actual line forming and standing in line for the movie, getting in there, getting a seat. By the time the film actually started, it was a pretty packed house. It was one showing on this one day. Interesting note, I went with my friend who was also white and when we got there, I didn't see like much in the way of other whiteies there basically. <laughs> I was curious to see what the demographic turnout was gonna be. Turns out we are not the only white people there and I'm very glad, it's always good to see I mean, what else can you call it? I mean, ally support or allies? I, I don't know. Like, once the theater filled, the house was predominantly black, and I, or variations therein, which, which given the film and the subject matter made sense, but there's a tiny little mix in there. Honestly, that made the experience all the better. Me and my soapboxes, I always get up and I always preach for representation on the screen, in art, cinema, society in general, but I always love seeing it. You know, I have a soft spot for, you know, cinema and games and media, so it's always good to see that representation. So I like when films like this get made. It's a community, basically, that, that are making a film poking fun at themselves, but also poking fun at the way that society is, the way the world is. So there's jokes against black people, there's jokes against white people, the right messages are preached, the right negative stuff is shit on and all this, and at the end of the day, it's a comedy. The film's end goal is to be funny and make you laugh and be like dark comedy, kind of violent, entertaining, and just a fun time. And the audience responded very positively to it, myself included. This was actually really funny. This was pretty, it's actually hilarious. This is, this is a really good time. I was curious to see if this was gonna work as a film. Now, I'm not gonna lie, was it perfect? No, I mean, it's, it's hard to be a perfect film in my eyes and films rarely get that like five out of five, but for what it was, what it set out to do, and its overall execution and my entertainment, this was, a, this was a great time. It's something that I want to watch again. When it releases mainstream and actually is in theaters next month, I'll probably go see it again with the rest of my friends who couldn't make it for this this first outing. It was it was a solid time. Literally a group of friends are going out to a cabin in the woods to celebrate Juneteenth and they all know each other from a story past and whatnot. And then once they get there, they the two friends that were supposed to be there helping to set it up are missing. Then like this one door to the game room is unlocked and there's this board game in there of very racist looking board game called The Blackening. And due to narrative contrivances that you can kind of forgive in the context of the narrative, once they start playing the game, then it becomes basically like a, a just a, a game of survival for them. And then panic and hilarity both ensue. The direction is you know, simple and effective. Do all the jokes land for me? Not necessarily. And also there's some like cultural aspects to it, which you know, I consider myself kind of, I try to be a cultured individual, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that, you know, me being of my background and all that, I don't have the same exposure that the other demographics would. So there are some things in the film here or there that went over my head, but for the most part, I felt like I was there at the cookout. You know, I felt like I was, I like to think that I was there and welcome and having a good time because uh, I was. The acting for the most part, almost all of it worked with the exception of a few, deliveries of lines here and there that seemed a bit off, but overall barely noticeable, only noticeable enough that like once or twice I was like, in my back of my head, I'm like, uh, oh, that's weird. And then right back into the movie. In terms of horror movie logic, for the most part, logical. I think sometimes they're driven by panic or by emotion and whatnot. And you always know, like what was great about this is that I could tell what the logical fallacies were because as you know, people, but oftentimes 
black people in movies what's the stereotype they always say oh don't go in there or watch out or why the fuck would you they're just basically like being called out mid-movie sure enough the audience or the whole audience did that in this film and for the most part they were alone for the ride they're <laughs> honestly some of the comments were as funny as the movie people wandering up a, a, a dark stairway and <laughs> the gal that was beside me what did she say <laughs> something to the effect of are there <laughs> are there any lights up in this piece it was something like that <laughs> just the, the way that she said it was just so like honest and casual and are just like is there any lights in this bitch like what's going on here i hadn't seen a si and then followed it up with i ain't seen a single switch in this motherfucker like it's it it little stuff like that because the audience wasn't interrupting the film they never were we were all every, everything that i heard was either in reaction to or a contribution to the film and that enhanced the experience for me greatly the narrative act two was probably my favorite part of the film like the the first act is nice it starts to set the pace has to get things going then once things are going act two was was great no complaints act three uh, suffers from some mild pacing issues here and there it's fine some of the choices i i just felt like it, it slowed down a tiny bit here and there just people aren't always logical or kind of disappear for a second then reappear later it's tad bit disjointed but it all by the end of it it all comes together by the end of the movie it all works i i was surprised it wasn't going to be more violent i mean it's not really a spoiler per se i, I don't know like there aren't there weren't as many kills in this movie as i thought they would be and when there are kills, I mean, th th there is violence, and this is definitely a film that's rated R, I think mostly for, I think mostly for language. <laughs> Overall, the film wasn't as violent as I thought it would be, and yet that's fine. Like, it, it worked, and by the end of the film, I'm glad that, you know, they did maintain what they maintained. I was just kind of surprised. End of the day, I, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, like, look, nerdy white guy who tries to culture himself and tries to expose himself to all forms of cinema, the, the blackening. I really enjoyed it. I have to double check what films I've seen this year in theaters so far, but I'm willing to say this is probably one of, if not potentially, the funniest film I've seen all year. I'm aware comedy is subjective. There's plenty of people, definitely a few I could think of off the top of my head, people that I know in real life that probably would not enjoy this film. I get that. but. You watch the trailer, you get a good idea of what it is. And by the end of the film, like, yeah, it's it's only an hour and a half, too. It's like an hour 34, but I I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. It's imperfect. It has its, like, share of flaws here and there. I mean, if you're a stickler for horror movie logic, then you might have some complaints. There might be some flaws in delivery here and there, but it's nothing to write home about. Effects, you know, for the most part, everything that can be practical is practical. I'm not sure if there was much in the way of, like, digital or anything that needed to be digital per se for the most part the dialogue works but admittedly there are some bits here and there dialogue sometimes can get a little bit on the nose just a little bit on the nose and there's also a whole thing with like a romantic subplot between two characters and there's periods of time in the film where we the audience are thinking you're in a life or death situation there's no time for this and it would be a bigger problem, but other characters in the movie also pointed out, they're like, what are you doing right now? We're trying to survive. Can we not do this later? And it makes sense why it's happening. And they even acknowledge in the film that it's happening. So, I mean, it's self-aware, so it's a bit more excusable, but other, I mean, but it's still there. That kind of stuff gets under my skin a little bit. But overall, I'm actually gonna change the uh, the rating that I had on this, I think. Feeling generous, and when it came down to it, I was very entertained. I gotta say, I could easily give this a surprisingly high four out of five i'd give the black inning a high four out of five it was i thought it was really good it does have its share of flaws in any other film i think the flaws that it had would have taken it down and i would have given it a four i was initially intending on giving it a four i'm sure critics out there are probably going to give it less so as well but my entertainment factor on this kind of outweighs my criticisms of the film i really enjoyed the blackening i want to watch it again there were some hilarious moments throughout it's just really good and i had a fun time so i recommend it if you're not in any of that or if you're racist or if you're just not a fan of black comedies you know you don't like friday or barbershop or whatever that kind of stuff but with like more of a modern edge to it then i guess i can get why you'd want to skip this one but hell i'd say go see this in theaters for one support the artists i always in a case like this i would say support the artists but also as a film it was great 
and it's fun to watch with the crowd. So even if you don't get to catch it in theaters, definitely stream it when it comes out. I'm probably gonna buy it, honestly. But yeah, stream it with some friends at home. This was a really good one. It was entertaining. I love the representation. And now I kind of want to look back into Tim Story's uh, like his filmography and see what's up. That's all the time I got for today. Those are my thoughts on the blackening. I hope I didn't offend anybody. <laughs> Just reviewing the film, taking into account some cultural context and whatnot. Thank you guys and gals so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode or whatever movie I review next. And yeah, goodbye, travelers.